Check the description for the following discount codes. I know my head might be ever so slightly chopped off every now and then in this review, but I wanted to try and get all of this in sort of where it sat in my cockpit, you know? It's only gonna be a quick review because there's loads of these reviews already on YouTube. And, you know, I, I bought this based on a lot of those reviews. And there's a few things that I feel people have missed in those reviews about how, it, how you actually use it um, that I think are really important. So I'm just gonna very quickly gloss over the basics. It is a yoke and um, throttle quadrant setup that all comes, you know, as one piece. Uh, well, not as one piece, sorry, as two pieces. This literally just slots into the side of this main piece here. Underneath this top flap, there is an Allen key included and two Allen bolts there that, that allow you to tighten up the legs underneath to secure it to and they literally, they like, they screw all the way into the base. So you could have as thin a desk as you want or a fairly fat desk as well. The only thing I didn't like was that they've got like a flat piece on the, on the end here. Why they didn't just leave it Allen key shaped so then you can put it in that way and spin it round quickly to sort of do them up faster versus having to have them in this way and do these massive rotations. I don't actually know, but they've chose to flatten it off and and do it that way for whatever reason. Um, so that works just fine. The unit is quite deep. I've actually had to, so I've got this sort of um, homemade DIY quick release uh, for like my HOTAS and my now yoke set up to go onto my sim rig here, which works great. Check another video out if you wanna see what I've done there. But I actually had to cut a hole out the back of it to allow the extra depth of this versus using it with my HOTAS set up. But that, that works fine, no problems with that. So you've got your, your throttle, your prop, your mixture, you've got uh, lever throttles up the top there. So depending, you know, if you're flying a Cessna, you're gonna use these. If you're flying a jumbo jet, you're gonna be using these. You've got your trim wheel. Um, and then of course you've got the yoke itself, 480 degrees, and it goes in a couple of inches and out a couple of inches. You've also got these, these display here, which in Microsoft Flight Simulator, actually functions as warning lights. In fact, how do they describe it? This is like the quick start guide you get. It says the status indicator panel consists of 12 LEDs that react to events in Microsoft Flight Simulator. For example, a low fuel warning goes off or if you want to check the status of your landing gear, the status indicator panel can tell you. So these are interactive lights. Um, for me, this is of no relevance because I fly in VR. So that, you know, the actual sort of, um, little plate comes off magnetically and they've got other ones that you can put on and customize yourself so that's quite nice again not anything i'd use because i fly in vr uh, and the same for these buttons here there's two four six eight ten twelve buttons here and you can put in fact here's all the little identifying stickers that you would use with these buttons here and these ones for uh, your customizable plate but again i won't put anything on these because i fly in vr so i can't see them anyway and you also get a bag with different colours, um, little knobs, well not really knobs, I suppose they're end caps for these throttle sticks there. I may as well just show you those. Again, I'm gonna keep this sort of stuff to a, to a minimum because it's all been done before. Um, so all that stuff's quite useful. The, uh, the throttle quadrant connects via USB-C to the main base and comes with quite a long cable. So you can separate them. I could have this here and my throttle quadrant right over there if I wanted to for some reason. They've all got M6 mounting screws or captive nuts in the bases. So you could drill through whatever surface you're mounting these to and secure them that way. You don't have to lock the throttle quadrant into the main base. Now this is one of the things that um, I haven't seen anyone else mention that I found a bit of a bummer. I'm learning to fly, as some of you may know, in real life. And the plane I'm flying is a little Robin HR200, which doesn't have a yoke, it has a stick. So my plan was to use my HOTAS stick in my left hand, just like I do in real life, and then use the throttle quadrant with my right hand, just like I do in real life to be able to practice everything I'm learning in my lessons at home. You know, if I get bad weather here and I have to skip a lesson, I can go back over what I did in the previous lesson here in the sim. Now the issue is this throttle quadrant doesn't function standalone. It has to be plugged into 
the base. And as best as I can tell, the reason for that is because there is no sort of USB controller in the throttle quadrant. It's just passing through the potentiometer and micro switch inputs to, I was gonna say to the wheelbase, so many sim racing reviews, to the, um, the yoke base itself. Because so, in reality, all there is in this quadrant is some rotational potentiometers. These are probably slide potentiometers. Um, this will be a rotational potentiometer. And of course, 12 micro switches for the buttons. So there doesn't need to be a USB you know, controller in there. It can just literally feed those button presses and what have you back to the base. At least that's my guess anyway. But yeah, that doesn't work. So that's left me having to use the yoke um, for my training even though that's not what I actually use in real life. It's not the end of the world, you know, but it, my idea, of course, was to do it with the stick and the throttle quadrant, albeit that would be a very expensive way for me to effectively have just bought a throttle quadrant. This is 350 quid here in the UK, and that's something else I'm not particularly happy about either. Um, so I, was, I would effectively have just been paying 350 pounds for a throttle quadrant. And the reason I wanted this one is because it has a trim wheel attached to it. Some of the other throttle quadrants out there don't have the trim wheel. And again, because I'm flying in real life, I wanted that trim wheel. When you're in VR, having like your trim assigned to buttons, it, it's not as easy to find. But in VR, if I'm flying, and I've got my headset on, got my hand on the throttle, you know, making fine adjustments, close my eyes for example, the trim wheel's just here and then I'm back on the throttle again. So you know, that's, that's easy enough to do in VR. Uh, and I use these two buttons here as my flaps, my, my different stages of flaps. So all within, you know, fingers reach. But, uh, but yes, annoyingly, I can't actually use this standalone. I have to use it with the yoke. Now, the, um, the, the I just briefly mentioned the display on the yoke here. They, what do they call it? They call it a flight management display. Access enhanced features and settings. The FMD has five core features. Select the input mode, Xbox or PC. Um, and it does retain the mode you use. Obviously I'm on PC, it still says it's on PC. At the box it was on Xbox. Uh, quickly select and activate pre-made profiles for Microsoft Flight Sim so you can set up profiles you know, for your controls depending on what aircraft you're flying. Useful. Um, provides additional training support by displaying profile assignments. Basically, it will tell you what the buttons do if you want to go through that little help section on there in case you've forgotten or you're new to flight sim. And it provides flight chronometer information, so time um, and the ability to time each section of a flight to assist with navigation. If you don't know, if you're, if you're navigating without the use of a tablet and some software, you do it using time. So you'd be like, right, I need to fly three minutes, 20 seconds at this heading. And you would use a stopwatch for that. So it has that on here. Again, no use for me in VR, but if you're not a VR flight sim guy, then it doesn't matter. Uh, and you can, well, you can, you can view and adjust hardware settings such as the color of the LEDs and the brightness. So a yeah, useful little display there. And again, for people not in VR, this display and these warning lights here and being able to label all your buttons, actually quite a useful function. One of the other things I've done, because I have a fixed prop in the plane I'm learning in, I've um, set my prop slider here to be my carb heat because that's one of the other things that I use quite regularly when flying in real life. So functionality wise, what it does, all the different little switches and knobs and buttons, it would have been nice to have a flap lever uh, you know, but, um, but assigning it to the first two buttons here is an easy workaround. So that's all good. The build quality for £350, I feel, is a little bit on the cheap side. This kind of reminds me of an old Tomy Turbo racing simulator from back in the 80s, in the way that it's all very plasticky. Like, it, these throttle, they just feel... Now, these are metal, I think, the actual... I believe they're metal. Oh no, maybe they're plastic. Uh, it's either, they're either poorly cast plastic or poorly finished metal because there's quite a rough finish to these upright pieces that the little caps go onto. But anyway, it all just feels a little bit cheap. Everyone's complained in other reviews that these are too easy to move. Uh, and they are easy to move, but they do stay exactly where you put them. But not for me, they don't. 
because I have a motion rig. And as I'm being, as I'm going down the runway and it's quite vibrate-y, I experiment with this, these actually gradually move their way down. So if you've got a motion flight system, these are no use whatsoever, in my opinion. Um, if you've got them sort of halfway, they will gradually shake themselves, shake themselves down under the vibrations. Um, and yes, my DIY plate does actually wobble up and down quite a bit. When I first made this, it was just for my HOTAS, which of course sits right at the back. Now I've got all this extra leverage, I can wobble it up and down. But, you know, it is what it is. Maybe I'll stiffen it up later or something, I don't know. But in reality, when I'm using it, you know, moving my throttle in and out, adjusting my trim, it doesn't move noticeably in, in sim. And even, you know, when I'm turning left to right, rolling left to right, there's no real movement. And even in and out with the yoke, you've got to remember when you're actually flying, like, for training purposes like I am, everything you do is very smooth on the inputs. I'm not doing this or, or in and out, you know. I'm, I'm using two fingers just on the yoke here and making very small adjustments because that is how you actually fly in real life. And this is where we encounter another issue on top of not being able to use the throttle quadrant standalone and the overall cheapy, plasticky build quality for the £350 being quite poor and I'll go back to that in a second. The yoke is not, the, the yoke is smooth if you keep that center shaft parallel in its movement. So if you use two hands, move it forwards and backwards, it's nice and smooth. There is quite a noticeable stop in the middle, I guess where you're switching from one spring to another, because obviously it is centered using springs. But if you, you don't fly like this in real life. A lot of the time, you've got your hand on the throttle uh, with, with one finger up against the dashboard and you're making small throttle adjustments. Um, or, you know, or maybe you're trimming, or maybe you're adjusting flaps, you know, or maybe you're doing something else. But a lot of the time, this right hand is busy and you're just flying using the left hand. And because of that, you are applying input, let's say, on this left hand side here. And that means there is some lateral pressure on this shaft and it catches. It just, is, it just isn't smooth. Look, it's almost like, it feels like it sticks at, at certain increments and it isn't, you know, prefixed increments. It's just where the shaft is catching. So that is a bit of a bummer, um, along with the sort of hard center area where it changes from one spring to another. Because when you're trying to make fine adjustments in flight with just your two fingers, the last thing you need is for your input method to be jerky. You know, the whole, the way you fly, from my limited experience as a trainee pilot, is as smooth as possible. So that really is a bit of a bummer. Again, you kind of get used to it and you, you resort to using two hands when you can to make sure you get a smooth input. But that's, you know, obviously left and right is, is not so much of an issue rolling the plane, but the, the, the sort of pitching it forwards and backwards just isn't as smooth as I would like it to be using only your sort of two fingers or your one-handed input, which is how we fly in real life. The other thing with this is there is bloody play, actual wobble, where this like yoke itself, this, like, the actual like, steering wheel part of it, is attached to the end of the shaft, look. Look at all that wobble. That isn't the shaft like moving, it's this actual piece here has got a good, I don't know, half inch of play? Like left to right, it's, and, and again, when you're trying to make fine input adjustments with two fingers, like you do in real life, you've got a half inch of play to take up before you even start moving your yoke. So I'm really quite disappointed for 350 quid. That is a lot of money. Um, like the fun, all the all the switches and knobs and everything's all great. You've got you know, different hats up here and buttons and, and triggers and all sorts. Marvelous. But the key element that I wanted in a yoke is for it to be smooth and precise like it needs to be in real life. Not for there to be a half inch of wobble on my, and you know, it's all right, is it all right? Yeah, no, oh no, even on the roll axis, we've got a bit of play. Why is that there? Is something not done up? If the easiest way to describe this is if you're, you're in a car and you take your horn out and you undo the big nut that holds your steering wheel in place. Undo that a couple of threads and then see how much your steering wheel can wobble around. This is what we've got here, both forwards and backwards or left to right, however you want to describe it. And then on the roll axis, well, it's just, it just shouldn't be like that. And the shaft is not moving. 
you know? So I've got all this wobble and movement before any sort of input is registered. It's just a bit crap, um, just for the money. You know, let's compare this to a sim racing product, right? 350 quid is 100 pound more than a Logitech G920. And that has a force feedback motor that actually gives you feedback about what your car is doing in game. In addition to that, the steering wheel's metal, it's covered in leather, it comes with a set of three pedals, this doesn't come with pedals. Um, those pedals are also metal, aside from the base itself, which is plastic, and you get, you know, the, the, the Logitech shifter, which is like the weakest part of that bundle because it feels very cheap and plasticky, like a, like a toy. And what I've got here for a hundred pounds more is just basically a big empty shell full of potentiometers, whether they're slide, whether they're rotational. I mean, this could be a Hall effect sensor. I didn't actually check. Even if it's a Hall effect sensor, they're still pennies. It's full of um, micro switches for the buttons, some LEDs, a little screen. There's no force feedback. It's just a big, it's, it's, it's far too much money for what it is. And this play that I've got in the actual yoke itself before any input is registered, is just a joke. Um, I did think about returning it, but I don't know what else to buy. You know, there's the, is it something Alpha series, which is like eight or 900 pounds for their yoke and throttle set up. You know, it's a lot nicer and I'm sure it won't have any of these issues, but that's a lot of money again, you know, just, just for me to be able to sort of practice at home what I'm learning out in the sky for real. I thought this would be good enough from what you know, other reviewers have said. You know, I could, I, could, I could live with the cheapy plasticky construction. These throttles don't bother me because I won't be using them. It doesn't matter if they flop down when my motion rig's moving around. But this play is a real bummer. Um, I just don't know what I'm gonna do about it. I think, well, I think I'm probably gonna take it apart, see if I can find where that play is and you know, put a load of Araldite in there just to hold it solid or whatever the solution might be when I find out why it's got that play in the first place. And also this trim wheel, everyone, everyone in the other reviews raves about how good this trim wheel is. And it, whilst it's nice to have, and it feels lovely and smooth, no one mentioned that it's actually really fiddly to grab hold of. It needs to be larger diameter, or at least protrude more away from the surrounding plastics there isn't much sticking up and you have to be very like, just, it's, it's not, it just needs to be a little bit bigger. You know, you, you, I don't like using it with my finger sort of rubbing that way on the raised sections. I mean, maybe, maybe that is the way to get used to it. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps that's the way I should try using it. I naturally, because again, in real life, the way I use the trim wheel in my Robin is I grab it and I move it like, you know, I sort of feed it like this. And that's what I tried to do here. And the plastics are in the way your fingers, your knuckles hit everything, it's a bit awkward. But maybe with this, I should just learn to gently sort of roll my hand over it like that. Maybe that's a solution. But anyway, um, that's really my, my review of this Velocity one from Turtle Beach. Like, the, the controls you have are what made me buy it. You know, the trim wheel, the throttle, uh, the mixture, the, the buttons here. Um, and they do function and they do work well enough for me to be able to do what I need to do. But the yoke itself, which I didn't even want to use and, and I have to now use, because I can't use this standalone, has all this play before anything actually, actually happens. And it's just, you know, it's kind of spoiled it for me. Um, just for the sake of channel support, I'll put an eBay link and an Amazon link in the description if you want to get one. Um, because if you if that's all your budget allows, the next step up is like twice the price. So, and, and if I find a way to secure this, I'll do a follow up video showing you how I've eliminated that because that really is a big deal to me. We shouldn't be able to move it this much, you know, without any sort of input actually registering. You know, and as I say, you can look at the shaft here, you can see it isn't moving. You know, it's not like it's not registering in the game and, and it is actually moving. The shaft isn't rotating as I do this and it definitely isn't moving in and out as I do that. So yeah, there we go. That's my review of the Turtle Beach Velocity One. 
they've done a reasonable job for something that should be perhaps half the price, you know. Like I say, Logitech G920, 100 pound less, three pedals, a shifter, a metal wheel, leather covered, force feedback motor, and whatever other, you know, technologies in there to make that work. This empty shell full of slide potentiometers, rotation potentiometers, some micro switches, some LEDs, and maybe a Hall effect sensor. Um, or two for the for the yoke itself, I don't actually know. It's just not, the value just isn't there, you know? Anyway, as always, that's enough of my fucking, oh, apologies, that's enough of my uh, waffling and uh, moaning about this. Um, as always, thanks for watching and take it easy.